Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's take a look at the anatomy of the duodenum. So remember, the duodenum is the very first part of the small intestines. So it's firstly coming out of the stomach, and then it goes to the second part of the small intestines called the jejunum. So if we take a look, what I've drawn up here is a couple of things. Firstly, you can see the big aorta, the largest vessel in the body, running down behind that of the duodenum, and also behind the pancreas, which you see sits inside this C flexure of the duodenum. Now, a couple of things. The duodenum can be broken up into four parts. The first part, the second part, the third part, and the fourth part. And so we're gonna discuss them in these four parts. Firstly, I wanna have a look at the vascular supply. So what are the dedicated blood vessels that feed the duodenum oxygen and nutrients so it stays alive? Well, firstly, remember, at the aorta, we've got a trunk that branches off called the celiac trunk, which has three branches of its own. These branches include the left gastric artery, which feeds the stomach, lowest part of the esophagus, a couple of other things. Then you've got the splenic artery, which goes and feeds the spleen. Here you've got the common hepatic artery that goes to the liver and gallbladder. And part of the common hepatic artery, we've got a branch called the gastroduodenal artery. Now the gastroduodenal artery goes behind the first part of the duodenum and branches into two parts. These two parts are the superior pancreatoduodenal arteries. Now one of them is anterior, so it sits in front of the pancreas. The other one is inferior, so it sits behind the head of the pancreas. Now the superior, or I should say, the anterior and posterior superior pancreatoduodenal ducts, you can see that they give blood, so oxygen and nutrients, to the first and second portion of the duodenum. Now, what feeds the second, third, and fourth portions? Well, you can see down at a lower portion of the aorta, you've got another branch that comes off. Now, we can't see where it branches because it happens behind the pancreas, but this branch is called the superior mesenteric artery. And one of the branches of the superior mesenteric artery is the inferior pancreatoduodenal artery. And again, there's a posterior segment, segment and there's an anterior segment. Now, the anterior and posterior segments of the inferior pancreatoduodenal artery, I know it's a mouthful, they give oxygen and nutrients to the second part of the duodenum and the third part of the duodenum. So you see I've written it up here. Now the fourth part of the duodenum, all right, coming off this superior mesenteric branch of the aorta, there is what's called the first jejunal artery, and the first jejunal artery has branches, right? And this is a duodenal branch. And this is what feeds the fourth segment of the duodenum. Now, in actual fact, this ju first jejunum artery and its branches can actually anastomosize, okay? So this means it can f come together with another artery, right? And it can actually come together with that of the superior mesenteric arteries. And that means the fourth part of the duodenum can actually get two blood supplies, one coming from the superior mesenteric, one coming from the celiac trunk, which means it very rarely becomes ischemic. Meaning, if this part got blocked, it doesn't matter, it's gonna get blood from up here. If this part gets blocked, it doesn't matter, it's gonna get blood from down here, okay? So the fourth, fourth portion of the duodenum very rarely becomes ischemic, so a lack of blood or oxygen to that area. Now if we would again break it up in those four particular segments, let's have a look. The first segment, which starts at the pyloroduodenal junction, so pyloric, remember the pyloric sphincter, this is the end of the stomach, the pyloroduodenal junction, that's right here. This is where it begins. Now that portion there's around about 2.5 centimeters. The whole thing's about five centimeters, so you could probably deduct around about 2.5 centimeters from that, all right? So again, around about five, 2.5 to five centimeters long. As it goes across, it actually goes, not just across, but it goes up and it goes back. So it actually goes up and to the back, all right? So remember that. As it goes up and to the back, you can see it sits in front of the gastroduodenal artery. Why is this important? Well, some people remember, coming from this part is gonna be acid from the stomach. Acid from the stomach can perforate the small intestines. If it perforates the first portion of the duodenum, it can go through and actually perforate the gastroduodenal artery, and this leads to significant hemorrhaging, okay? So that's an important clinical point. Another important point is that this part here, right, part one, actually sits at the level of the first lumbar vertebrae, all right? So it sits at the level of the first lumbar vertebrae. As we get across, we hit something called the superior duodenal flexure. That's this bend here. And from the superior 
duodenal flexure. So the inferior duodenal flexure is our second part, which is around about 10 centimeters long. And this lies just a little bit to the right of the vertebral column. In actual fact, it goes from lumbar one, lumbar two, and lumbar three vertebrae. So that's basically the distance that the duodenum covers. So it goes down, down, down. Now an important point of the second portion of the duodenum is that there's a little hole here called an ampulla. Now this ampulla is the hepatopancreatic ampulla, ampulla, also known as the ampulla of Veta. What's important about it? Well, the bile duct, so the, the gallbladder is gonna be sitting right here. It's gonna have its own duct, the bile duct, and the pancreas has a duct called the pancreatic duct. Those two come together here at the hepatopancreatic ampulla and they rele release their substances into the second portion of the duodenum. The gallbladder releases bile, which emulsifies fats, breaks it down, and the pancreas releases a whole bunch of amylase, lipase, pr uh, proteases, and also bicarbonate, other alkaline substances to break all that food stuff down. Now, as we move down from the inferior, uh, inferior duodenal flexure, this is the first part of the third portion and it goes all the way across to the fourth portion which is just a little bit to the left of the aorta all right now this third portion is around about 10 centimeters long and it actually sits in front of a couple of important structures for example it sits in front of the right ureter this is the tube that goes from the right kidney to the bladder sits in front of the right psoas muscle sits in front of the right gonadal vessels as well and then it gets to the fourth portion. Now the fourth portion is about 2.5 centimeters long. So if you add all this up, it's around about 25 centimeters, which is about 12 inches, which is about 12 fingertips wide, which is what duodenal means, 12 fingertips wide. And we get to the fourth segment. This turns into the jejunum, okay? And you can see the fourth segment sits to the left of the aorta. So this is the anatomy of the duodenum.